Christian Parenting. So this is a good question and probably one that a lot of parents will relate to at some level. Dear Matsons, my six-year-old has a lot of anxiety about new people and new situations. How do I lovingly help him navigate and work through his anxieties? Well, one of the important things to do, I mean, this is a big question, but it's also so common. I mean, uh, anxiety at all age levels right now mm-hmm. is kind of off the charts from all, what we've all been through in these last couple years. So uh, to normalize the fact that anxiety is, um, is happening outside of that, their, your child and their life, um, but that you feel it too. And uh, it's important to name it for what it is. And anxiety can show up in different ways, right? There's, your child might be the one that is hiding behind the couch and doesn't want to go anywhere or be in front of people and so on and so forth. Anxiety can also show up in your, in your child in a way that's just, you know, they're, they're really fidgety. And it looks like they're totally distracted, um, and yet they're anxious, actually. It's not that they can't pay attention. <laughs> so it shows up in different ways, but it's normal. And I think the big thing here that I would think of is, is that um, as a parent, you want your child to know that anxiety isn't who they are. And it's something that people struggle with. And that, especially if you've ever struggled with it, you can talk about what that looked like for you. And that's the main thing, not that, that that they're attached to it as an anxious person or that they wrap it up into their identity. Yeah. And so at six years old, this is going to be your child's kind of, you know, named struggle. Every kid has something they're working on. And so to cue in on this and to say, this is what we're going to be practicing and working on. So hopefully when we launch you into the world, you actually know how to deal with your anxiety. You might see it go away, but in a lot of cases, it's linked to our wirings. It's linked to our biology and then obviously our circumstances. So you want to go at your child's pace. That's really tip number one. And if you're a go-getter and a fast-paced uh, person in your wiring, you need to be thoughtful about the fact that you could feel, um, you could actually create anxiety for your child. So to go at their pace. And the question is, how do we actually get them, you know, to navigate life and to move through anxiety? So what you do is, again, calling anxiety what it is and trying to help your little one determine what it looks like in their little body. So do they get, does their tummy get all gurgly? Do they feel heavy in their chest? Do they feel like they're going to have a hard time breathing? Um, Do their hands get sweaty? So you're helping them identify, and this takes time and practice, but what does it look like? For little ones, we might have them color out anxiety, sit down on the table with them and draw it out together, that situation where they feel really nervous. Anxiety and fear are different. Anxiety is this uh, fear of the unknown. So oftentimes when you recognize that and you know that fear is the fear of something, spiders, snakes, the dark, but the fear of the unknown is, I don't know what's going to happen. So when you think of that, then as parents, we really want to help this little one know what's going to happen. Remember, there's six, there's seven, there's eight. They, there's possibilities galore of what could happen if I go into this social environment. And because a lot of kids haven't had maybe the normal developmental experiences the last couple of years, we're seeing the increase of this. So normalize it. You're not, um, this is something that a lot of parents are having to work through. So if you want to choose some of those opportunities, be picky about which ones you're going to put your child in. Don't choose every social activity, but if a few of them, you might say, okay, we're going to do this. It's grandma's 90th birthday party. <laughs> we really want to make sure we're there. Uh, it's a once in a lifetime moment. So we're going to prepare. And you're going to have to do a lot of preparing on the front end with your little one. And you might talk through all the possible fears and really try to help coach your, your child through what's going to happen, who's going to be there, and what do they need to feel safe? What can they do if they get anxious during the party? They can run over and grab mommy's hand. Mommy can be with you. But just know that as you walk with them through each of these experiences and they have a positive experience and say, look, anxiety showed up, but I actually made it through it. And there was comfort and care in the end. Mm -hmm. Their confidence builds and you're going to see them take more risks as they get older. 
So I'll pause there. Did you yeah, this well, make we, you think of anything else? We went through this. I mean, our yeah. oldest daughter, and it was was it kindergarten? Pre pandemic. Yeah, about <laughs> the same about the same age, uh -huh. maybe or yeah, pretty it's close. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was uh, at a fun run of all things. And um, boy, she, we were all excited about the experience until the day of, and until mm -hmm. she saw that track, and she, until she saw all these people and everything, and she kind of had a locked up kind of a panic attack as a little kid. I'd never yeah. seen that in her ever before. Good thing mom's a counselor because <laughs> um, I was of the mindset that, hey, we made a commitment. People made some pledges here and you're going to run this thing, kid. <laughs> and, We're having uh, a fight right there out on the fun ride. <laughs> oh, and she says, I need, this is a moment I need. And and you took her and how did you help her? Yeah. And actually you caught it. And I just said, let me have a moment. So in the moment, if you're at grandma's party or you're at the fun run, I took Adonai and I pulled her aside away from all of the overstimulation. So that's what's happening with anxiety. Lots of noise, everything gets amplified, the fear rises and the body starts to take over. So I pulled her away and we went to five senses. We went over to some roses and I, and as she's crying and hyperventilating, we started to touch the roses. And I said, how does that feel? <laughs> Soft. And then how, what does it look like? And so I'm having her look at the pokies on the leaves and making sure that I'm not hurting her. But she's, she's getting tuned into what's right in front of her. What do you smell? What do you hear? What do you taste? What do you feel? What do you see? And so grounding her, she her body starts to calm down. And that's what happens when we start to focus focus on I'm safe and this is okay. So what you could do is draw your child's attention to what's in front of them. You can even give a little six-year-old, if it's appropriate for the environment, something soft like a blankie or a teddy bear. And that would be their grounding exercise where they can be able to feel with their five senses to hold their bear and to feel how soft they are. And All of that work at the beginning yeah. and, and it was repeated throughout life now in, in a teenager. Repetition. Um, <laughs> you know, has by her own words would say that she's overcome and knows how, how to handle anxiety. And, uh, you know, she's, she gives God a lot of that credit in terms of helping her, but it's personal for her. In fact, she used that as a, as part of her testimony when she was baptized right here in our church, which is amazing that that's one of the things that God did for her. So, um, there's hope in there's this, hope. right? Yeah. And so this is your assignment as the parent of this child. So if you relate to any of this, take one of these tools. Uh, we hope this helps you. And if you're a mom of a daughter, uh, I partnered with Christian Parenting and we've created a courses for you at every stage of your daughter's growing years. It's called Helping Moms Raise Confident Daughters. And it's really addressing a holistic approach in the biblical, clinical, and relational wisdom on how to walk alongside your daughter and help build these tools to help her grow in confidence in who God made her to be and um, who he is and to practice these kinds of things so that she's ready for whatever her story brings her way. If you're interested, you know a mom of daughters, check it out at cpguides.org. And we want you to know we're behind you, supporting you. You're the right person for the job and we're cheering you on.